Iggy, you know, the migration on the RSPZ2 firmware from 3.0 to 4.0 is pretty comprehensive. Having reviewed the RSPZ2 version 4 upgrade a few times, the migration from V.3 to V.4 is a significant upgrade. There are many new features that provide endless number of new applications. In your opinion, Iggy, is there one new feature or application that stands out above the others? Yeah, Carol, there are, actually there are many and um, we don't have enough time. Uh, we, we could probably take about two or three hours to uh, discuss all the, all the really unique features of the new version four of the RSPZ2. And I'm glad you mentioned a migration because this is truly a migration from version three to version four. So you just can't do a, uh, a an upgrade, a simple upgrade of uh, the version three software of your existing RSPZ2s. You have to do the migration. So that migration package is available from our website. Just click on our support link. You can download the migration package and then upgrade those existing RSPZ2s that are running version three. And you, you can look at the version number on the bottom right-hand corner of your user interface of your RSPZ2. And so what's unique about the RSPZ2, I believe is, is one of the new configurations and that's what's gonna be one of our focuses uh, in, this, uh, in this series. And if you can see on my screen right now, I do have, I am running version four. And in terms of the configurations or sometimes we call those patterns, is what has been standard with the version three in the past and is still a standard feature in version four. And as you can see, we can still create the very simple cross connection between two disparate communication assets. These happen to be a, a conventional radio and a digital protocol such as P25. But as you remember, any of these interfaces of the two interfaces of the RSPZ2 can support digital protocols such as JPS, the bridge protocol, or the JPS standard ROIP protocol. And as you can see, we can now dir directly support JPS MCC consoles. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, as well as a variety of push to talk of a cellular services, such as ES chat, Zello PTT, Verizon PTT plus, AT&T enhanced PTT as well. And naturally we can support a radio. We can also support standards based protocols such as SIP and RTP. We can also select different patterns such as the cross connect, of my assets at the top, as you can see there. And we can also backhaul that transmit and receive information over, again, different digital protocols. We can also select a independent pass-through configuration or pattern where we segregate the two communication assets, as you can see on the representative communication asset tiles at the top, being backhauled over, again, different digital protocols. So the new configuration that we added in version four is the custom uh, configuration as you can see here. And for some of you that have uh, had some experience with the Z series controller, you might recognize this user interface. Now this allows us lots more flexibility in this custom configuration. You can only get this in version four. So uh, I, I stress the migration from version three to version four. As you can see, I can move my tiles, which represent communication assets into different nets. I can do a simple cross connection as you see here. I can move another tile that represents an ROIP backhaul. Now I've got a cross connect with a backhaul, but what's unique about this new configuration, the custom configuration, is I can move another digital protocol or a backhaul. So I have four uh, assets interacting together. We can also take this to another level. I can create two separate interoperable nets. I can even take, for instance, I'm going to take this ROIP resource and I'm going to move it into our new monitoring panel in the RSPZ2. Now I've essentially promoted that resource into a destination for monitored unselect audio. So I can drag a, a resource tile that's concurrently active in a net and I can move it into a a monitoring group. And as you can see by the yellow border around the tile and the single-ended arrow, that means I'm delivering unselected audio in this example to uh, my ROIP resource, which might be another NXU at a remote location that's maybe feeding a, a console, a four-wire interface on a console. Uh, so I can bring other assets from 
other nets into my monitoring net and begin uh, monitoring those assets. And I'm, I'm just going to bring all my assets from my concurrent nets into my monitoring net. And now, as you can see, I have three resources being monitored by my ROIP destination. And what's interesting about what's taking place in this monitoring net, these resources are not interacting unless they're interacting in the nets, nets above. So pretty significant. And in terms of a standalone RSVZ2, we've just essentially added a tremendous amount of, of capabilities. And one thing we can do in the nets now, in this new version, is we can we can stream RTP transmit and receive information from that particular net to a voice logging recorder that is RTP compatible. And we don't do any native recording in a platform, but we can stream that information to an existing platform. And I've got a record and pause button as well. So I'm now I'm recording all the transmit and receive information in this net. I can even rename this net. And what's nice about the ability to rename nets is that this is persistent. So if I power this gateway off, power it back on, those nets and the naming convention of those nets will be uh, recovered upon powering up the system. And so if I look at my resource, uh, my monitoring destination in my, uh, my monitoring net, and if I right click, if I right click that asset and go to the setting screen, it now allows me to change the personality of that resource. And now I can select, as you know, other types of resources to be supported by that tile. And one thing that's kind of interesting about the new build, we can now support MCC consoles. And so this now allows me to have access to uh, all my resources. Uh, I'm focusing now on some of my radio resources. Again, I don't need to support radios. I can also support digital protocols on that, so to speak, front hall interface. And so if I look at some of the parameters that we have here, particularly in terms of LAM over radio, uh, we can do lots of adjustments. For instance, the inbound and outbound gain or the audio levels going to and from the gateway. We can also control how we detect the received state of the attached donor radio. We have Vox, VMR, which is voice modulation recognition, where we trigger on the voice attributes of human speech. And we can also then select a active high or active low control signal that was derived from the donor radio. But one of the other significant features of version four, remember you got to migrate from version three to version four, is the capabilities of supporting full duplex. In the previous version, we were unable to support full duplex traffic through the gateway. And so why is this significant? Is we can now support maybe a repeater function. So we can support transceivers or stations that are full duplex, meaning they can receive and transmit at the same time. And you can turn your RSPZ to a standalone device into a full duplex repeater. And so while I'm in the audio control panel here, I'm going to open up this advanced panel. And we've done this to segregate a lot of some of these advanced features and not confuse the provisioning of this interface. But there's a couple settings in here that I thought are pretty significant. And that's the ability to allow or disallow the receive traffic or transmit traffic through the gateway. I, I, I'm seeing a lot of uh, uses for this. And one of those would be maybe blocking the transmit traffic going to the donor radio. And a, a good example of this is maybe I'm supporting a, a landing zone where I have aircraft uh, communicating with uh, operators on the ground. I might want to block the traffic, particularly in an interoperable group, block that traffic from on the ground from being transmitted to the aircraft and adding confusion to the incident. We can block that inbound or outbound traffic, and we could not do that in version three. And since I'm in the screen, we can also time out the inbound received traffic and the outbound transmitted information to them from that donor radio. We can select as low as 10 seconds and up to three minutes of, of a, a timeout period. So lots of information there, Carol. I think we're getting close. And, and I think one thing I want to talk about in our next webcast, which we don't have time right now, is the new tr uh, adaptive transmit audio delay feature that you can see here on the bottom left. Really pretty significant stuff there, Carol. So I, I believe we're getting close to the end. Yeah, that, that, was, that was excellent, Eggy. Thank you so very much. It's easy to see why we need additional webcast to cover all the new items that are available after the migration of RSPZ2, version 3.0 to version 4.0. We look forward to doing the 
additional webcasts, and they'll be coming up in a few weeks. We'll make sure that you get an invitation out in, in advance of those webcasts. And again, we very much appreciate your being with us today. We hope that you have a good day and a safe day, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.